Hey guys, and welcome to one of the most awesome competitive games I have had in quite some time. I'm a rubber duck of war going under the guise here of the blind bandit taking on back to dark. I wonder if he meant to be baked duck there, but it is the green one, the legendary warrior himself. And we recently did a best of seven over on Logic's YouTube channel. You can go check out the whole best of seven there. But I had a couple of highlight games. This is one of them. There's also a Lizman versus Dark Elf game that will most likely be shown on the channel. But for today, we're going to be bringing up the Force of Chaos up against Bretonia, my opponent going full Chad and bringing up the Rapunz sub-faction, though there is no Rapunz in the actual build, and we're going old school Chaos. This is how you used to play Chaos back in the day, it is gangster, it is hella hardcore, and it is certainly far cooler than the mass skirmish cav that they tend to resort to at the moment, because we have the man, the myth, the dragon ogre legend of old Colex Sun Eater leading our battle lines today, coming in with all of the goodies, Star Crusher, his chain lightning, stand or die, and look how fantastic fantastic as it looks. I really like the, the little kind of indents in his armor, looking ferocious as always. Alongside him will it be his younger brother, the Dragon Ogre Shagoth, looking to one day perhaps fill the shoes of the mighty Kolek, though that is some way off for him. We do have the Soul of Damnation, Regiment Round Hell Cannon in the back, protected by a unit of Chaos Warriors with great weapons, so pretty cool stuff so far. With a Chaos Sorcerer of Death, coming with Spirit Leech, as well as the Purple Sun, and then our main battle line shall be made up of cheap, cheerful, and rowdy Chaos Marauders, looking to bring the pain to their enemy, including their unit with great weapons. They'll be lifting those mighty axes and bringing them down on the, hopefully, the armoured flanks of the enemy cavalry. We have a couple of Chaos Warhounds as well, one with Poison and the other one is also with Poison, and on the far side we have a third unit as well, so we're really relying quite a lot on this cavalry to take down the enemy back line, whilst the Dragon Ogre Shagoth and Kolek deals with the enemy characters and cavalry. For my opponent, he has a really cool squad up in the air with Henri Le Massif up in the sky, rolling dirty, alongside a basic lord who is coming with the crown of command to give Unbreakable, which is certainly very tasty. You don't often get to see the basic lord, but my opponent was whipping out some pretty crazy picks all tournament and doing some really lovely work with them. His main battle line is going to be made up of basic peasant mobs, dotted all the way along, and then of course it is the uh, the much demanded peasant bowmen. So we have peasant bowmen with pox arrows and some basic ones all the way along the battle line, backed up by a couple of units of pole arms, so men at arms with pole arms all the way along, and then questing knights. So we have one questing knight, one knight of the realm, another questing knight, and yet another knight errant on the left hand side and one on this right. So pretty cool stuff, a load of cavalry, a load of peasants, basically what you expect from every single Bretonian force. But we do have a foot damsel sort of life coming in with uh, Earthbloods as well as Dwellers Below to try and catch us up if we do surround the, her cavalry a little bit too much there. So without further ado, let's get this battle underway. Hell Cannon has already opened up and unleashed a couple of salvos here. And I'm actually going to be focusing down the Peasant Bowman where possible. My opponent's in the wise decision of keeping his cavalry well out of range of the Hell Cannon. But I'm honestly not that wide by the cavalry. I'm much more fearful of these lowly peasants and their bows, whittling down my large monsters from long range. Now the Lord, as well as Henri, did manage to discover my Chaos Warhounds. I did notice my opponent push into the trees with some Knights Errant. So I'm trying to keep these Chaos Warhounds hidden. I don't know how successful that's going to be because they need something to get into this back line if the hell cannon it can't kill all the peasant archers now it can do a decent job against them as you can see it does send them packing but they will simply return back to the battlefield to unleash hell upon me once again more peasants though currently feeling the wrath of the soul of damnation up to 73 kills Unfortunately, our Polo Warhounds are spotted, so we're going to drag them back. Our opponent does go for a cheeky little flank charge into the Chaos Marauders. We're actually going to try and spring a trap here with the Warhounds as they can apply that poison. And in comes the Dragon Ogre as well as Kolek. Can we get some pretty nice hits on the Lord? Stand your ground has been popped. I'm going to give up this chase, though. We don't want to get saturated on peasant mobs and other such units. Looks like our Chaos Warhounds do just about manage to turn tails and flee before the might of the peasants. And we can get out of range now of those pesky pox arrows who are being hunted down right now by the Soul of Damnations. Honestly, a really good pick. I think a lot of people don't prepare for it when coming up against Chaos, and it can be pretty damn nasty. In the front line, Marauders will be able to chop and chew their way through a lot of the peasants, though Knights of the Realm are not going to start ramrodding into the front line. I really like this usage of them. We do have some great weapons in support, though, looking to counter charge Knights Errant and other cavalry where possible, and that Hell Cannon is just ripping apart the peasants in the back. I love it. My opponent's done a good job though, starting to get a bit of a surround on. You can see the Quest Knights and Knights Errant floating around this left hand side. And a big problem for me is I don't have a load of fast mobile anti cavalry troops. I just have my Lord here and the Dragon Ogre Shagoth. So they can only be in so many places at once. And we do overextend a little bit. We did have support here. We have Hounds coming in and Marauders. But now the Dragon Ogre alongside Kodak are actually suffering a little bit. 
We do have the Knights of the Realm fighting strong. It looks like we are going to come down with a purple sun, though, on the Knights of the Realm, trying to get rid of them as quickly as possible to buy time for the Dragon Ogre, as well as Kodak to beat the living snot right now out of this Lord. That is, that is how you bonk a Lord on the head right there, and they are suffering quite badly. Unfortunately for us, we do not have any access to healing, unlike my opponent, who certainly can do some of that. Purple Sun is uh, unfortunately not going to quite catch the Peasant Bowman, but it will be enough to break them off. Looks like another spell did come down there, probably. I'm not even sure what that spell was that came down there to uh, scorch the ground. The uh, Quest of Knights are... Uh, oh, it's probably the uh, the Lightning, I would assume, from Kolek. Unfortunately, that Dragon Ogre is actually taking quite a lot of punishment here. Henri is doing an absolute shift with the support of these two Peasant Bowman units. Peasants are starting to flood into the back. Likewise are the Quest and Knights, Marauders, as well as Warhounds and Great Weapons. are trying to fall back where possible. I really want to protect this Hell Cannon. It's up to 170 kills and once again is the best answer we have right now to the enemy range because all our Warhounds have been dragged back to defend rather than push forward aggressively. The Dragon Ogre there is uh, suffering a little bit. He is running for his life and he's tried to rescue him if possible. And Kalek does have a Scroll of Shielding on him at the moment, gifted to him by the Chaos Sorcerer of Death, who is currently surrounded by some Knights Errant. So we're going to be trying to support here with the Hell Cannon and break off these units and the Pole Arms and allow the Chaos Sorcerer to escape. And pop a cheeky little Spirit Leech down on Henri. And now we have the Poison coming in off the Warhounds alongside Kolek, who just slaps Henri on his bootay and sends him running. That Spirit Leech also helping out quite a bit. Dragon Ogre Chekhov has charged back into the fray once more, looking for blood, revenge and carnage. And might be enough there to break Henri. It's a big, decisive hit. And now he's once again being supported by Kolek as they go after the Lord together. Bros fight together. Chaos Warriors have been committed to the front lines now. We are pushing them forward to try to deal with these Quest Knights and help support Kolek where possible as Chaos Warriors are holding down this left-hand flank. However, that did leave the Soul of Damnation exposed. We do have the Warhounds. There's certainly not going to be enough here to drag down the Knights Errant, so Kolek is going to have to come back and help deal with this situation because the Soul of Damnation is such a key unit for me today. The uh, Dragon Ogre Shagoff is trying his best to take down Henri. Spirit Leech does go down and it looks like he does manage to kill him with his last animation after already breaking. And now the Dragon Ogre Shagoff does fall to the might of the Quest Knights. There's still a decent amount of Quest Knights left available. We do have some great weapons to help chop them down. We have Chaos Warders of weapons as well as the Marauders. And in the back of it is just absolute havoc. Knights Errand won't survive too long up against Kolek, who's put in a really good shift so far. Solar Damnation does keep getting forced off its artillery piece. We keep popping it on once more. We only have four models left keeping that bad boy firing. Knights of the Realm are terrified. They are forsaken their vows and oaths. We do have some uh, Chaos Mordors in the distance who did rally, who we need to come back and apply a bit of pressure. You can see we're trying to be a little bit sneaky with these Chaos Marauders and force our way into that Peasant Bow line, if possible. The Chaos Warhounds will be used to chase off the Knights Errant, not a bad target whatsoever for them, although we could now start to get to uh, use them a little bit more aggressively to try to push in to the Peasant Archers with the support of Kolek Sanita. So of Damnations, there is only three Dwarvish crew left. But uh, that is absolutely fine. They still will be able to fire if they can get back on top of the artillery piece. Men at arms have been forced off. And looks like yet another spirit does go down on the Lord. And he decides, you know what? I don't want to engage with Kolek without the support of my people. Muster the fjords, bring the peasant bowmen to me, and then we shall engage in a final confrontation. So Damnations is once again back online with just the three dwarves, dwarves holding firm. And uh, blood has been popped as well as boom, and we're going to continue to fire some shots in here. And we're going straight after those peasant bowmen, which I 100% do think, in hindsight, is the best target. But there is still a lot of cavalry, which is also rather scary. Now, unfortunately, the Soul Damnation is taking a decent amount of shots coming in from the peasants themselves. Warhounds are going to fall back to the sanctuary of the Chaos Wars of Great Weapons to force off the cavalry. And the Chaos Sorcerer, hey, he's getting down and dirty. He can charge in and do combat as well. Just because he's a sorcerer doesn't mean he's also a beast. And he can uh, actually, for a mage, he's actually got relatively decent stats. You can see we're trying to uh, hound down these quest knights right now with the support of some Chaos Warriors. We have a lightning strike summoned by Kolek, embracing his inner four to break and in fact shatter some of the peasant bowmen. That Soul of Damnations is still going strong. Those three Dowie warriors, absolute heroes of the people, launching shot after shot and all of the peasant bowmen are now starting to flee for their lives. Kolek looking for that decisive strike. He knows if he gets a fair one on one up against the Lord, it shall not be a challenge whatsoever. And even an unfair one he'll take. Well, there's a lot of pole arms and quest knights nearby. Luckily for us, we do have great weapon support and some more Chaos Marauders as well. 
but not really been able to hunt down the damsel of life. Good protection from my opponent has indeed kept her alive. But uh, now, you know, her lord is starting to abandon her. So Kirk's going to come around and give her a big old bonk on the top of the head there. Down to about half HP. And oh my god, go like means business. Just slaughtering the dams of life. I don't want any more healing. don't want any magical shenanigans. The lord does pop crown of command to keep himself fighting. But Kolek cares little for your puny crown as he crushes it and rips it straight off the head of the Bretonian lord. A Pyrrhic victory, a very hard fought victory. I think we were certainly on the back foot there in the mid stages of the game. But luckily for us, keeping the Soul of Damnation active and alive was in the end just about enough. Well played to my opponent once again. He's an absolute champ and it was really fun to play him. Is of course the mighty green one, aka Backed Duck here. I don't know why it's called Backed Duck. I and mean, if he meant Baked Duck, like a little duck who's a bit worse for wear, being on the uh, having you know, swimming around the weeds a little bit too much. But either way, I uh, I love the name and it's also always an awesome competitor. We we'll have to get him on the channel soon once again, hopefully for a best of seven or something like that. Oh, I think like Bowmore would be a really good parent as well. That should be a fun best of seven. Maybe I'll message the guys a little bit later. But yes, the whole best of seven was featured over on Logic's channel. I'm probably going to cast one more of games from the best of seven, which was a uh, Dark Elf Lizardman game, which was certainly some good fun. And I don't bring Chaos too often, but when I do, you know I bring them with absolute style. Kolek, 3,355 damage value. An absolute beast. Now, I look at the damage done, damage value of all the units, including that solid damnation which probably got some ridiculous work done in just a second but if you guys enjoyed this one make sure to leave a big fat juicy thumbs up subscribe as well for more glorious total war warhammer content and feel free to comment down below what you thought of the battle what you'd like to see in the future and all that good stuff the link's down below as well in the description to my Patreon where you can support the channel or my Discord where you can submit replays to me, get involved in tournaments and events I host and just keep up to date and chat with a load of cool people. But anyway, back to the battlefield. So, Kolek, an absolute beast as expected. 50 kills really gave that Lord what what, uh, what kind of what for as well as the Damsel as well. Chaos Sorcerer of Death, 926 damage value, not shabby whatsoever. Purple Sun was maybe a little bit wasted. I just saw my characters isolated and thought they needed a bit of support, but the Spirit Leeches did add up, and he even got down in the uh, in the dirt and in the thick of the action towards the later stages of the game. Morons didn't do anything crazy, but they did clear out the enemy chaff, and that was certainly quite crucial for me to do when coming in with more of a defensive approach to Chaos and protecting that Hell Cannon. As for the Great Weapons, they fared a bit better than their non-Great Weapon Brethren. 494 and 550 damage value isn't too shabby at the end of the day. Chaos Warriors got nearly 500 damage value and were basically full health at the end of the game. Their main job was to babysit and protect the Hell Cannon and it that did that relatively well. Chaos Warhounds were used a bit, a bit too defensively maybe but I just really wanted to protect my centerpiece. 800 damage value is really good, 510 is not shabby, 200 not quite so amazing. Dragon Ogre Shagoth did get isolated a little bit and picked upon, but despite that, still got 1.4k damage value and managed to take the head of Henri Le Massive from his rather broad shoulders. Soul of Damnation, just shy of 2k damage value, 275 kills. Though you may be expecting more damage value, they were shooting peasants for the majority of the battle, but it was a big win condition for me. I needed to force them off, and the Soul of Damnation let me do that. As for the Lord, 1,000 damage value, 239 on the Damsel, and 1,000 on Henri Le Massif. They did eventually, I mean, they're quite a cheap hero court in fairness, bringing the, the basic Lord, but unfortunately they just simply could not stand before the wrath of Kolek, though really good micromanagement, keep him out of action, just dive bombing where needed. Peasant mobs did uh, their job, their duty, which was to die, and the pole arms did relatively uh, stand stuff as well. Nothing too crazy, to be honest. Just about 200 damage value on these, 200, 455 on the other unit. Peasant bowmen were luckily for me neutered relatively uh, ineffective. 240 damage value, 440. Yeah, it's not looking too good for them due to the consistent pressure there of the hell cannon. Knights fared a bit better. 870 damage value, 733, 796, 638, and 592 for the damage value stats there. Hope you guys enjoyed this one. It was an absolute pleasure to play in and really awesome as well to cast. So if you got this far in the video, remember you are an absolute legend and I love you very much. But until next time guys, peace, peace. And as always, stay awesome.